Hi, my friend. It's Pat Sloan here. It is week two of summer camp, Camp Sloaney. We're at summer camp for our Block Wednesday sew along. First, let me tell you the topic. It is campfires and bonfires. <clears throat> Those are kind of a campfire is a small one and a bonfire is the big one. <laughs> but I know that some of you will have memories of one or the other. So I thought I would just sort of lump it together. I think that they are sort of the the excitement in a way of camp for me you know having a campfire we didn't have campfires at our house you know we didn't you know a charcoal grill was about it and not even that often so having that was just sort of exciting it was something to look forward to they did them several times at campfires during the you know week you were there so it wasn't just a one-time thing and then you know doing s'mores or sticking hot dogs on the stick to grill over I mean just all of that was just so much fun and of course sitting around the campfire and chatting or you know just being that camaraderie so what does the block look like ta-da here it is and I have a segment today for you on um, the colors and what I thought through it and what I was thinking about and also bringing in the sashing colors and knowing what I'm doing there. Now remember, whenever I do a pattern, I also give you just a view of it in repeat so you can see how it looks. I think this is a pretty cool one in repeat. I like that the connector leaves these open spaces. And then there's also a coloring page if you want to color your block. Even for a single block, you could just do one block. Let's go ahead and take a look at the fabrics and what I might want to use for this bonfire block. Okay, or campfire, whichever you like to think about. <clears throat> so here's the first block which was our tents and I used the blue and I used a black base, but there's actually blue and a little pop of that um, sort of coral in here. Okay, I even got a bird. One of the birds got in this one. Yes, so sweet. Okay, there's the block, but I want to keep in mind the fabrics that I've picked for sashing. So here are my fabrics. You have that guide on your supply list and you have the layouts, you can kind of see what's going on. So I want to keep in mind that there will be this corally red and the pink, a lot of that in the sashing. But I think I'm going to use, one thing I think I'm going to use is the Girl Scout fabric that I was gifted. That's a GS for Girl Scouts. And I want to put that, so let's just keep this over here in mind. So I'm going to put that in this part of the, this interior pinwheel. Uh, will be this light and on the exterior I think I will go ahead and just use the background that I'm using for most everything. So what do I want here? Well there's green in the Girl Scouts and this line has a whole lot of green. Whoops that's yellow. <laughs> it has yellow too. Um, so there's a whole lot of green. I'm thinking what do I want? In this outer corner here how would this look? So it'd be a lot of pattern. And then the pinwheel, the one pinwheel would be like this. Yeah, so there would be the one part of the pinwheel. And then I would have on the other side, the darker part. So would I want that to be green? It would be right up against, you know, like it'd be white, but on this side, it would be right up against like that. So if I did it that green, this is one of the grunge, which is their basics, um, and which would give it a really good contrast. If I did the, this print, that's pretty good too. That's not, that's not too bad, but this gives it a really, really strong contrast. So the print would be on the outer side, and then this pinwheel effect would be these two. Because if I use something lighter, like if I did them, let's say, like this guy, uh, you're, you know, that's interesting because it would be this, the Girl Scout one would also be skinny, right? Like this, these two. And that would be a very light pinwheel part in here. This, this whole interior part would be very light if I did just these two. Um, I could go and do something like, okay, so there's a yellow. So I could do a yellow against this green out here. And that would also be 
kind of neat. But when I'm doing these, I always want to do like more than one block because that would be so much fun to see. Now, what you'll notice here is instead of me auditioning this over here against the white, which I know has high contrast, I flipped it now and I'm auditioning on this side against the, the second fabric. Because if I were to say, put this one in here, you would totally lose it. This, these are just too much pattern, 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 pattern. Uh, that's why I want to be sure that what I'm putting next to this floral really pops. So I think like the green and yellow are the best options together. I mean, I could go pink, um, but I'm thinking green and yellow just seems, yeah, it seems like that's like the more outdoorsy at the moment feel that I want to go for. Okay, the other yellow I have, of course, I have just the one that reads more solid, or this one has a print, it's like an alphabet on it, see that? So if I did this one, I would want to, um, you know, fussy cut so the alphabet's that way. And that just gives it a little bit more texture than this one, but I kind of like that one. I kind of like the little pops of coral, which bring the coral in from here. There's pops of coral over here. Okay, there's pops of, and then of course the coral will be out here when I do this piece uh, for the sashings. So having a little bit of coral in the blocks is really nice. All right, so I'm going to go with this one and we'll see how it looks. So this fabric has lots of big splashy flowers here, but it also has a few sections that are a little bit more tonal. So for me, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna have more splashy fabrics in that big square or do I want to have more of the tonal? Do I care? Well, I like to care about these things. That just seems to be the way I'm hardwired. So let's take a look because I want to cut it so that I'm getting more, more splashy flowers, which means I'm not just going to fold this and cut my five inch squares. I am going to go ahead and fussy cut, which is putting the ruler and cutting the square over the big flowers. Now, remember it's a half square triangle. So what do I want to do? Do I want half of the flowers on one side? See now here's the line, here's the five inch. And so that means right now this side has a lot of pink flowers and this side is more the background. So I'm like, okay, or you could put it like right down the middle, sort of, you know, so you get sort of pink on both sides. This has some yellow on that side. So you could go either way with this and accomplish what you want. Because remember, you're only going to get the flowers on half of this because you're creating a triangle. All right, so I think I'm going to go with the splashy flowers on one side and then the other side won't have that and then I'll cut a similar one. So two of them will be a little bit more splashy. So I just made one cut and then now I have, see I have just one, one cut here. So now I will take the ruler and put the five on that cut line and then oh, it's actually, I'm going to bring it in just a little bit so I can trim it nice. and. I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the edge because up here is such a small part. <clears throat> it's not like I, it's a big usable section. It could be a two and a half inch square for my scraps. Okay, so here we are. We have this. Now they put it on the white. Now to fold it in half when I'm sewing my half square triangles, I could be sewing this way. And if I did that, I would have this side or that side. But that isn't how I cut it. I cut it so that all of the pink is on one side, not sort of split. So that means I will sew my line from on this, this direction. So if I fold it, this will be the half that's a less splashy. And this will be the half that has the big, big splashy fabrics, big splashy flowers. So I will do a second one similar to this and then take the background and make my four half square triangles. So to cut the second one, I'm taking it and sort of positioning here. So this is kind of the same spot on the fabric where I would get not only the pink area, but there's a lot of interest over here. And so that would work to go here. But I was looking down in this section because I thought, well, I could get half of the five inch. Let me put half of the five inch here. And then what do I have on the other side when I do that? It's a different 
a section of flowers. It's sort of shifted down a little bit, so it has more of the white, and it does it has that brown, but it would be more in the corner, so it doesn't have the yellow and that you see here. It hits a different it's a different section. So I thought, well, that would make them look a little different. So I think I'm going to do this one so that they're not so matchy matchy. You know, sometimes I don't like to be matchy matchy. I like it to be just a little bit different. So I want to get sort of past there. So it's a little bit long. I'm just going to sort of chop off that top here and then I can do my five inch square. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll take the five inch square and be sure that I've got a diagonal where I get all that pink on this side and I'm going for a little bit of the other stuff so I want to be sure I don't mess up and not get it. Uh, and there we go. So here is my, whoops, there we go, second five inch square. Okay, so here are my two squares ready, which will have half pinks and then I flip them and it has a tan flower and that one has a tan flower, but they're a little bit different. They're not quite the exact same spot. All right, now I'm gonna sew it up. Now that you saw that, look at the block again. Because this pattern, this one, this floral that I did has a lot of that movement, I got a very interesting effect. So I have a heavier pink and yellow here and a little bit heavier over there though they're not even quite as heavy this one is heavier because that half square triangle also had the heavy color and then this is more open more green on those sides so i really like how that sort of it looks like a meadow you know it just has that really beautiful feel okay so this is your campfire block and when you do your block please share a story you have about campfires, share the positive, fun things. Uh, you know, we wanna keep it positive and fun. Uh, <laughs> speaking of stories, on National Sewing Day or World Sewing Day, uh, World Sewing Machine Day, there we go, uh, you gave lots of super cool stories about your sewing machines. And I thought I'd just tell you that my first sewing machine, which I do not own, uh, was in given to me in Europe by my parents when we lived in Belgium. I started sewing in my home ec class in high school. And it was like um, when my teacher said, sit down and turn on the machine, it was the angels sang. It was a just an, an amazing experience to learn to sew. I loved it. Uh, and my parents bought me my own machine. It was called a Genie. And I know some of you have Genies out there. I think my friend Roseanne told me she even still has a Genie. Mine was on European circuit, so it did not come back to the States with us when we moved back to the United States because uh, we needed a machine on a different circuit. And so my parents bought me another machine when we came back, <laughs> which was so generous of them. <laughs> Okay, a couple other things. I have a mail call, but first before that, I want to tell you the uh, outcome of the quilt auction for, Rob, for the Rob Elementary School Memorial Fund. All of you, there were four quilts done by the Fat Quarter Shop, and I'll put this little picture up there, and they were auctioned off, and they raised over $13,000 for those four quilts. Just amazing generosity for the people who um, donated to and bid, did the winning bids. Kimberly and Kevin Jolly, who own the Fat Quarter Shop, added to that total to get 15000 So they donated and wrote a check to the Memorial Fund in Texas. And Texas is the state that they are located in. So mwah, mwah, thank you, everybody. Okay, this up here, I did the um, little diagram to figure out my spacing for the for the squares so i'm pretty excited about that uh let me show you a video i did because paul asked me could i sort of talk about that part so i have talked about how i laid this out on um a, another video but i'll show you it again in this little short on my computer i read a request from paul who wanted to see how I go about thinking through a design. So I thought, well, let me just do that with the panel because um, bigger designs are a lot more involved. And even here, it takes a little while to do all this, but I'll just give you a snapshot. I use a 
program called Draw Plus X8, which is no longer made, nor is the company around. So you can't really buy this package, but it's basic software for drawing. It is not quilt oriented. This is what you get. You get a blank page, then you have to create shapes and put, you know, colors in them, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, but we are going to work on the panel. So first of all, I had to have a, the panel, which I trimmed to 22 by 42. And this was working in full size scale as if it's a full piece here. And that gives me the ability to put the two inch squares around it evenly. So I don't want like 21 because then I'd have to have half of a two inch square, right? Then I colored the two inch squares so that I could see the difference of them. So I'm building them in this four by four. There it is. And I, I wanted to have at least, whoops, I wanted to have at least two of them that were, uh, you know, colored differently. So I could see if I had to have partials, like right here is a partial. This one, to get it to fit across for the size, it is not a four by four, it is a three by four that will go up here. Now, I, when I originally did this, I thought I would just do the patches I already had, and the size seemed a little too skinny, you know, too narrow, 38, so I ended up putting the strips on either side. I'll be putting them on. That gives makes it a little bit chunkier, so it's 46 wide now, which I think is a little bit nicer. It's a little wider. Uh, now, if I wanted to put an inner border, I could just take this whole checkerboard that's right against the center panel, and I could make that a two and a half inch strip instead of squares. Um, that would be a way to change it up. And then I colored it so that I could see and get them alternating, light, dark, light, dark, or dark, light, dark, light, however you want to think about it. And it ended up being starting with a dark, even though I build my blocks always kind of starting with a light. That's how the sequence worked out for me. Okay, so that's a little peek at what I, how I use my drawing package. This is a real simple one to just figure out the border uh, and how, how many squares I need to do it. Now the fun thing is Beth was watching and she is the person who made this and quilted it. So here is a, let me just step over. Here is a picture of Bess and she did not add any extra on the outside and it looks fabulous. So now I'm like thinking, well, do I even want to go and add extra on the outside? Maybe I won't. Maybe I will just leave it as this all the way around and be done. That is another option, isn't it? <laughs> There's always, always options. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save mail call for tomorrow uh, because I have a couple of them. And so we'll do, we'll do a mail call on tomorrow's video. So today you are, you are doing your campfire block. Summer camp has been so fun. I am so excited at the number of you sewing along and sharing your blocks. Remember, this is just nine blocks and you're going to have a fun quilt. This is block number two. So if you're just jumping in now, you can go back and get the uh, tents. That was the theme for block number one. Okay, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.